Knicks go into Indiana to face off against the Hicks. And uh, just could not climb out of an early hole, man. Usually, you know, you get into a game of runs and, and try to climb out of it. Knicks just uh, could not get timely stops, man. And, and it was Miles Turner who started it. And basically, Miles Turner who ended it. Knicks fall in Indiana, 111-98. Tough one. Tough one, man. Knicks fall to 5-3 and three on the season. But still early to make adjustments. Uh, ah, I, I hated this one, man. I hate losing to the Pacers, no matter who they have on the team. Like you mentioned, Miles Turner just, you know, he, he was not having a great start to this year shooting that ball from, uh, from the three-point line. And uh, we heard Clyde and, and um, Mike Breen talk about it for a, a good five minutes, and then they stopped saying anything about it because he was on fire against us, and we didn't have any solution for it at all. Um, defense was probably the biggest thing I looked at in this game. We have another game, back-to-back -back games, uh, where our starters in the negative – like terribly uh, four of the five in double digit negatives. Uh, it's just a overall rough game. We made some runs, but they, it, I can't look past the defense. Uh, we had some good offensive runs as the game was going on. RJ Barrett uh, gave us a tremendous third quarter, tried a little bit there in the fourth quarter for us, but defensively they, they, they would just, you know, they would put our run out with their, a run of their own and do what they did in, what, the entire night. Uh, everybody had numbers all over on that damn, uh, Pacers team, I almost said the Pelicans. Yeah, Turner with 25, plus 14. Harris LeVert felt like he was making everything in the mid-range, 21 points, plus 18. Nice to see him healthy, but not against us. You know what it is. Um, once again, TJ McCall, I, I know he only had five points, but anytime he scores timely, against us, I, timely. man, always timely, timely man. you know? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's just a, a rough one. Five and three for the next three and one away. Shake it off, move on to the next one. They, they, the Knicks, the Knicks better start getting some wins because these burgers are about to expire. Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been, I've been eating out for a few days, man. I I'm trying to eat at home now, man. Bur the burgers getting stale days. over there, man. Yeah, they, they get a little stale, but but we still got faith, man. We, we, we'll be all right. Yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 tough loss, tough loss. Um, I thought, you know, my takeaways for the game is. You know, if the Knicks, when the Knicks play at the center position, um, you know, we have two rim protectors and guys that are not comfortable right. going out and, and contesting, you know, the perimeter. So when you have two centers, you know, Miles Turner is going to be the story of the game with seven threes, mm -hmm. but their backup center hit two threes as well. He's also uh, a three point shooter. Um, so to me, that was that was part of the start. That was the difference in the game. Um, and and the Knicks. I was disappointed they didn't make any adjustment at all. Um, mm. And I understand that you have Mitch Roberts is not comfortable, but there was no adjustment made. And I think it was a difficult decision because if you do, you know, attack uh, Turner, now you're leaving the paint open for anyone and our perimeter is already a little weak. So that is a weakness there to attack the Knicks. Um, and the three point uh, di uh, difference, you know, we only shot 24 threes and I thought that was part of the Pacers game plan, knowing that they have Miles Turner at the rim. They were running off, yeah. running off off, uh, off the three point line and they made us try to play the mid range game or to play the rim game and understand that they have Turner there. And I, 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 I didn't think we went to RJ enough early um, and, and I didn't think we went to him. Um, I just didn't think we we utilized him to the best of how he should have been used going into the game. Listen, uh, I share all of JD's sentiments. I mean, look, they were definitely forcing us off that three point line. They were forcing us to drive it in the paint. And, you know, the Indiana Pacers have a team that's just as deep, if not deeper than ours. You know, everything that we can do, they can do. So it's like, you know, going toe to toe with a team that mirrors you, but is also better than you in certain aspects, right? So they're deep in multiple positions. And then on top of that, our defense was extremely porous. Anytime you give up 111 points, over 100 points to a team that is deep, you're in trouble. Playing from the deficit, playing from behind is always debilitating, especially, you know, when you're struggling to shoot, when you're struggling long range. Um, you know, when RJ Barrett is the sole high scorer of the game, that's a problem. Julius Randle was living on the boards, 14 rebounds for him, quiet from a scoring standpoint. You know, they were locking him down. And it's interesting because you look at R.J. Barrett and you look at the games that he's been 
Um, you know, he's averaging, I think, around 27 points per game in these last three games before tonight's game. And it seems that as RJ's production rises, Julius is lower. So it's a very odd relationship that we're seeing. It's a very odd pattern that we are seeing from the two of them. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's really going on with Julius. He seems a lot of times his body language looks a little off. I do feel like this was a much better game for him in terms of aggression than we saw last game. I will give him that. I think he played hard. Um, But I think the thing with Julius is that when he gets locked down, sometimes I feel like he freezes up and he doesn't have, you know, a bag to tap into outside of the immediate game plan. I'm not quite sure what Tibbs is seeing on the court. I'm not quite sure, you know, what kind of game and how the game unfolds for him, but it's a lot different than I feel like a lot of us are of the game that we are looking at. And I think that's something that we really have to go ahead and um, narrow in on and figure out before we get too deep into the season. We need rotations that work. You know, our defense has already suffered because our offense has gotten better, right? So you have to figure out how to combat those issues with your rotations and, it's 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 gonna be difficult. Again, there's not too many teams that that can really space you out that way with five guys. You know, Pacers may be one of the few that can do that with with their uh, primary and backup big. So it, it's not a natural um, um, defensive stance for for either Mitch or Noel. It's not natural for them to do that. And on top of that, coming into this game, Turner was shooting abysmally from beyond the arc, save for the first game of the season or the first or second game of the season when he dropped like forty. So. It wasn't necessarily a bad game plan to leave him like that. It's just tough to see that he was draining it all night. And so, yeah, you want to argue to go small. But then, you on the flip side, our perimeter defense is so porous that these guys are getting into the lane at will. So you need the rim protection right. to try to right. even get a stop because, okay, right. not going not gonna, to you know kill him, but Kemba was getting flamed out there. You had Brogdon. You had Levert. Getting into the paint at will. Our perimeter defense is getting cooked. So that's putting a lot of strain on our overall team defense. So you have that a problem. The transition defense is a problem. Whether it's off of a turnover, off of a block or steal, or off of a you know a long mid-range or a three-point shot, we're not getting back on D. Knicks came into this game 25th in opponents' fast break, fast break points per game. You know, that, that's that been a big problem for us. We, we cannot uh, overcome that. And so that has to be an area of adjustment for us. On the flip side, you know, I mentioned Brogdon and uh, and, and Levert being able to, to get into the lane. I thought Levert had a big second half for the Pacers as well, especially when he went up against our second unit. He was pretty big for them. But I feel like offensively, you know, we weren't able to get into much of a flow because our guards weren't really able to create off of their drives. Julius wasn't really able to create off of his drives. That's where our offense gets potent. And, you know, yeah, it was a physical game. Give credit to the Pacers. They played as hard. They played tough. But, you know, we weren't even really able to get into that flow offensively either. So, uh, all, in out, all in all, it was a tough night. Yeah, definitely a tough night. All right, like every Knicks fan, it always hurts a little bit more when we lose to the Pacers. But let's bring some optimism back into this community, some reality back into the community. I think going into the season, if I would have told everybody we would have started the season after eight games, five and three, we all would have took it, right? It would have made sense. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, obviously there's some things that we all feel could be adjusted and changed to make the team better. But this team is exactly what we thought they were going into the season. You know, uh, Julius Randle, he's uh, he's a clear leader and best player on this team. All right, but we all knew that he isn't going to be the number one option on our championship team. But he's playing great. They're killing him for no reason. I don't. I don't really understand it. You know, um, uh, RJ taking the next step. You know, he he's looking like a, a potential star in the future, but he's not there yet. You yeah. know, there's no way that we could play our rookies over uh, the bench because we're not playing to give rookies minutes. We're playing to win the game. You know, so like who get who gives us the best option, the best opportunity to win? It's right. definitely not Grimes and, and McBride. It's it's IQ and Burks. I mean, it's just common sense. You know, I think like we started off really hot to start the year, and people got really like like overly optimistic, and now they see a few losses, like it's like the sky's falling. But it's not that serious, guys. It's going to be a long season, and uh, the Knicks the Knicks have a, a lot of games ahead of us. If you look at it after eight games, we're, the, the the Knicks are exactly on pace to go. 15 and 30 with two games to spare. 
you know? So, like, it, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, the, what everybody's panicking about. We're going to play the Bucks. I mean, let me tell you something, guys. It's going to be another tough game against the Bucks. <laughs> Thing, man, I'm just I'm gonna keep saying it. Perimeter defense, perimeter defense, perimeter defense. I mean, Kemba Walker and Fournier, it's it's unbelievably bad how horrible they are defensively. They're getting blown yeah. by every single play. You're starting those two guys and it's just killing you. It's putting you in huge holes. You know, Kemba in his prime wasn't a defender. Now he's lost a step. It's just I respect him, I'm giving him credit for yeah. taking charges. He's taking charges from Sabonis. You know, so I give him credit, but he's just slow, and it's just not going to work with this defense. And then we're coming off the bench with non-defenders. We're coming off the bench with Burks and Quickly and Rose and Obi. Like, I was in the chat during the game, and -hmm. people were saying, you know, it's an effort thing on defense. No, it's a personnel thing. We don't have the – Tibbs does not have the personnel to run what he wants to do on defense. We just don't have the personnel to be a good defensive team, and – this is going to change. These guys aren't going to get better defensively. Kemba and Fournier and the guys off the bench. Besides RJ, our two best wing defenders are the rookies that aren't going to play, McBride and Grimes. Tibbs doesn't trust them right now. And that, you know, there was honestly a play where Fournier in the second quarter, there was a pass to him, and he just stood there for like five seconds. He just stopped. And the Pacers were like, they didn't even know what was going on. They just picked it up, and then they got a fast break. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? It's just the defense, again, it's just, it's non-existent. It's not even competitive, this wing defense. And it's just not going to get better. I don't see how it's going to improve, man.